Professionally, I'm an organizational psychologist. My mission or my team mission is to really to build more positive and productive organizations. So we may ask, how can we do that? So we basically try to apply the positive and organizational psychology of workplace, designing learning solution to build more engaged and productive teams, leaders and employees. Hong Kong is an international city. No matter what kind of organization they work in, uh, but mostly maybe the multinational organizations, local back big corporations, government or even NGO, I think English is still the key medium of communications. By the time that you apply for a job, attending an interview, on day one you have to sign the employment contract, and on a day-to-day -day basis you have to and you will be exposed to English as a mean of communication both on a written basis or on a face-to-face -face communication. So you have to master English, otherwise you cannot master your job. So I think that's one key reason we have to master English in communication. And uh, secondly, I think in the organization, no matter what roles you take, either you're in a frontline role doing uh, sales and marketing, or you're in a back-end role doing HR, finance, IT, uh, you cannot escape or you cannot not communicate. So meaning that you have to deal with people. So if you have to connect and uh, connect with people well, you have to express your ideas, express your opinions, express your feelings, so that you can co-create something big together and meaningful together at workplace. You have to master communications, and you have to master English. Uh, it's even more important. You, you step into a role from like a local role to I call it sometimes regional role, meaning that you have to work with people from different cultures. And again. English is the international language, so uh, if you can, again, manage language well, that can help you to connect with people uh, with different culture. Finally, talking about like regional role, uh, as you aspire to work with like different culture, working with people from different countries, and I think if you can master English well, that can open up the doors for you, because you uh, can work in other country maybe, or on a day-to-day -day basis, you work with like in a project team with other people virtually and in that context, in that environment, and English and communication is really important. And for me, I have the opportunity in the past to work in like in um, Korea, Japan, Singapore, uh, to very far away to Dubai and Mexico. So looking back, if I cannot master the communication or English well, I do not have those opportunities. So to, to summarize, I think uh, we really have to learn the fundamental about communication and English because it will open up the door for you for different career opportunity, for you to have more uh, enjoyable day-to-day -day, uh, work life with your colleagues. And finally, we cannot not communicate. So master the English and master communication. At Workplace, we have tremendous opportunity to use English uh, to communicate. If you're in the frontline role, like on sales and marketing, you have to be in client meeting, doing consultation, you have to interact with your customers, uh, talk to them, uh, question them, listen to them, and present your company and product and services so that they are all get convinced. So in those moments, it's really important to use your language to create a good first impression that your customer can trust you. So those are very important moments. Looking back, if you are not in the front line, you are working in the back office. On a day-to-day -day basis, you have many opportunities again to present. Uh, either you have to present your proposal, your project updates, or your survey result with the customers, to your board, to the big boss in the boardroom, like the CEO, CFO. You have to master your language. Wow. Uh, if not in a face-to-face -face manner, you have to do it on a written format uh, through email or different ways of communication in the format I shared earlier, report, proposal and all those things. And again, that will be creating an important moment that your internal colleagues will perceive you either positively or negatively. So no matter what roles you are at, many opportunity for you to use English or language to communicate well, to connect with people at workplace. At workplace, language is really, really important because it can create a competitive advantage for you. The more language you master, the more opportunity that you have. 
Of course, you may ask, for certain organizations, they may be demanding you to use one language more than the other. But if you can manage English, Cantonese that we live in Hong Kong is important. And of course, Mandarin, you're looking at work with people from the greater China region, or, and uh, that is becoming more important. So if you ask me uh, whether I should master one, two or three languages, of course, if we can, we, I would suggest you to master the three languages because the more you master, the more that allows you to connect with people from different backgrounds and culture and also that will be open you up a lot of career opportunity. So master the three languages. At Workplace, we will have the opportunity to work with people from different cultures. When we say culture, it may be different uh, background, of course, in terms of age, and you know, gender, in terms of personality, or different levels of organizations. So I think when we work with uh, people from different culture, we have to be, number one, uh, be curious and be open-minded. I still remember I had the opportunity to work, to work in Saudi Arabia. And you know, working in different culture, you have to greet each other, I mean, connect with people. I still remember at one moment, my, my team leader at that time reminded me, Machi, uh, when you I mean, uh, greet the ladies, the female, be aware that if they don't greet you at the first place, don't shake their hands, because in their culture, uh, there's a distance between male and female. So again, I, I, when I recall that memory, if I don't really aware of that, be open-minded and to understand about the culture, I may, meet, I may meet, make some really silly mistakes. So I think tip number one, be really curious and be open-minded to learn about other people's culture. I think secondly, uh, when we work with people with different culture, uh, we can spend some time to understand some of their general norms. Uh, an example, I still recall when I did training uh, in Korea and in India, when I asked a question in a class, you know the, the response in the class. In Korea, when I ask a question, no one responds. Everyone remained very silent. But in India, when I asked the same question, you know what happened? 10 people in the class, 10 people give you the answers. So very different response. So the point to make is you have to be really aware of some of the general norms in that culture and be aware about your own style and how far or how close you are with that culture. So with that, you can be more agile and think ahead on how you adjust yourself. So to summarize, I think to allow us to work really effectively with the people from different culture, you have to be curious, be open-minded, seek to understand, and be flexible and agile. And that will open up the opportunity for you to connect well with people from different culture. To be effective, in communication uh, with English is like any any like sports. You have to master the basic basic fundamentals. To me, uh, the fundamental for effective communication in English will be master the grammar. I still remember in the in the school days, I really spent tremendous amount of effort in learning the basic grammar, the the book of the grammar book. Uh, even though nowadays I may still make some mistakes, but I think I will refer back to make sure that those basic fundamental are proper and correct because it's a solid foundation for you to create a good first impression in a day-to-day -day workplace scenario. Tip number one. Tip number two, I think it's the opportunity and exposure to use your language, okay? In Hong Kong, we may be using Cantonese as the main medium, but you have to look for opportunity to practice English and communications uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, uh, in school, a workplace that will be opportunity for you when you uh, present to your client to write your report. In those scenarios, uh, look for opportunity. Uh, you may heard about the story of Ma Wan, and when he was still a teacher, he talked to the tourists. I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, that is an example to search opportunity to practice your language. That's really, really important. Finally, I think to move from good to great, uh, to strive for excellence, you need to have a, like a platform for you to. Uh, to stretch yourself and sustain their learning. With that, I would recommend you to join Toastmaster Club. You may heard about it's a platform to practice your public speaking in English and the communications. So this is a really great platform. I've been like spending like over 10 years in that platform. Personally, I find it very rewarding and useful uh, to uh, 
learn, I mean, to move myself to the next level. So, dear students, three tips. Master the basic, exposure, day-to-day -day practice, and then find a platform for yourself so that you can move from good to great. So the magic behind communication, we talk about a lot about like English as a medium of communication. But think carefully for, for an effective communicator, apart from the language and the words that now I now share with you, there's an important step behind is your thinking process. How you think about the subject, how you put your ideas in a well-organized manner so that your recipient can understand easily, I think there's one magic behind is to master your thinking, make sure that you know about the subject, know about how you organize your message. And then you may ask, what's the magic behind thinking? And I think that go back to the psychology of the human being is the time when you share and present whether you are in a good state, good energy, uh, whether you have a message to share, matter, whether you can uh, uh, let your recipient know who you are as a person. So there, we, there, there are something more deeper in, inside you. So uh, my fellow student, learn the basic fundamental as a first important step and then work step by step from communication to thinking and then from the psychology and finally who you are as a student, as a person. I think that's really the magic that allows you to open up many career opportunities and connect with many different people in your life.